Hey, good morning, everybody. It's the Codependent Coder uh, doing a little video tutorial on getting Travis CI set up with a, a GitHub repository. Um, so a bit of context on this. Um, to date, my, my blog, which you shall go to, oops, uh, Codependent Coder, Right now, my, my process for you know running my tests and um, deploying the changes to the site is all kind of manual. Like I have a make file with some targets in it that does parts of the, the process, but the actual triggering of those actions is done completely manually by me um, in VS Code. So I have some tasks set up in Visual Studio Code, and I just manually run those tasks to do things like deploy the site or you know, run the linters or whatever. It'd be great if that was done automatically, um, i.e. if I had some sort of continuous integration set up where every time I commit a change, it just automatically runs those tests. And so Travis CI integrates very nicely with GitHub repos. So that's what I'm going to use. Now, before, about two days ago, I had never done anything with Travis before. I've used Jenkins quite a bit, but I've never used Travis. So if I go to, I'm already signed in. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, there we go. Travis test. So I have a GitHub repo called Travis test. I guess I can open up the repo as well. That really just contains a couple, you know, skeleton files. And it was really just a, an opportunity for me as a sandbox to sort of play around with Travis and see how it works. So I'm going to take what I learned from this and apply it to my codependent coder repo here. And that's the idea. And I thought I'd record it along the way in the hopes that it might be useful. So let's get started so i'm going to just drag this ticket to in progress uh set up travis for my blog repo uh one of the things i actually did was even write some basic acceptance criteria that's what the ac stands for um, that is that pull requests are built and build status goes to the github pull request but pull requests are not deployed or pushed to docker hub um, builds of the master branch build a docker image which is pushed to docker hub that's actually something i currently do not do at all so this will be actually a new thing for me once i get travis up and running and then the last thing is when you it builds the master branch uh automatically deploy test three any changes so that the the site i don't have to manually deploy the site and so let's get started so i drag this to in progress i'm gonna just get a branch started here and some of this will be kind of me figuring stuff out as i go so apologies for that but uh oops check out that branch. So here I am in VS Code. So the first thing you need with Travis is a file called travis.yaml. And just create a new file here. Travis.yaml. And that's the wrong directory, dummy. So it has to be at the root of your project, you, or sorry, the root of your, your GitHub repo. So it's .travis.yaml. And it follows a fairly simple format. Um, what I'm actually going to do is open up another VS Code window here. There we go. Okay, so this was the Travis YAML I created for my test little, little test project. Um, and so I'm going to use this as a starting point just because the one I used for my blog is going to be very, very similar. Um, I'm going to start off with just these parts for now. And I'll explain what they do. So the idea of a Travis YAML is you have this, it's sort of this declarative file where you can specify sort of your basic project structure. Like, are you doing a Python project? Are you doing a Ruby on Rails project? That sort of thing. So that's what this language thing is for. In my case, what I all I really want from, from Travis is just to run a shell script, um, i.e. my make file. So that's why I chose bash here. Um, a lot of people will do things like you can say Python, and then there's various niceties that Travis will put on the, the, the build slaves related to building and uh, running tests for, for Python projects. Like it'll automatically install, install PyTest to make that available for you, that sort of thing. Um, I kind of want all to control that myself. That's why I went with just bash. The pseudo part is, so actually these next two lines are, are related. So the way my build pipeline currently works is I have a Docker file and so this Docker file just copies all the stuff. Uh, well, okay, installs a couple of packages and then copies like some shell scripts, my markdown lit file, all the Python files and any markdown files in my content directory. That is anything that's a blog post over to a Docker image. And then 
my build process actually runs linters over the, that content inside the Docker container. And then when I'm, you know, run the tests and then just turf that Docker container afterwards. And my base system is, hasn't been changed in any way, shape or form, which I quite like. So that's all fine and dandy, but that means that whatever I do on Travis is going to require Docker. And that's what this services Docker thing is. You have these two lines to basically say um, to, to Travis, when it builds the project, I want to have Docker available to me. I want to be able to build a Docker image and do things like potentially deploy that image to, or sorry, uh, push that image up to some sort of Docker repository like Docker Hub or whatever Docker repository you happen to be using. Um, now where the pseudo comes in is if you want, uh, if you add these, these two lines, the services Docker, you actually also have to add the pseudo line because running Docker requires pseudo access on the machine that uh, Travis is going to be using to build your project. And then the last part is the script thing, which is basically just what is the command that is going to run when doc or when Travis tries building your project. So as a starting point, I'm going to do something really simple. I'm just going to say a hello world. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's a basic Travis YAML file. And with that in place, you can commit that change, get into your repo, and then tell Travis to look at your repo and it will automatically uh, use this information to actually build your project on any change. So why don't we do that? So I'm gonna add this file. Oops. Add a message, uh, basic. Travis YAML, and I'll reference the ticket. Um, and if I push this up, actually, I think what I will do is set up the actual um, linkage. So right now, Travis has permissions to look at my Travis test repo, which is under my PZL and GitHub account but it doesn't have permissions to look at my codependent coder account or code, sorry, codependent coder repository. So we need to actually add that. And this is where the video turns into the, I'm not quite sure how you do that. So let's see if we can figure it out. Um, maybe the plus sign, manage repositories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am who I say I am. Okay, yeah, there we go. That's exactly what I was looking for. So when you first, so I, because I've already set up Travis to look at one of my repositories, um, the Travis um, integration is that, I'm not sure if that's the correct term, but um, in your GitHub settings, you can add different uh, integrations. Travis is one of them. And then when you add that the first time, it'll actually ask you, well, what repositories do you want to have access to? And in this case, I only added the Travis test one because that's what I was working on at the time. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my codependent coder repo. And now with that, Travis will be able to actually see that repository or it should be able to. So let's go back to Travis here and see if it shows up in my repositories. And there it is. Cool. So there's no builds for it yet because there's no YAML or Travis YAML file on that repo yet. So let's go ahead and push that up. Oops. Wrong window. Uh, what's this branch? So push that change up. And I think what will happen is it will actually pick up that change and start building. And we can see it's running. And look at that. So automatically, it just noticed that there was a change on one of the branches in that repository. Notice that there's a Travis YAML file in that branch and then read it and started building it. So right now it's just, it's sort of booting up a virtual machine that's going to run the build in. That's one of the downsides of um, having the pseudo e requiring pseudo access in your build is that instead of it being in a container, it actually has to spin up a full virtual machine, or at least this is what I'm gathering from that I read in the Travis docs. So the startup time's a little bit slower. Ah, there we go. Cool. Okay. So once the build starts, you can actually watch it in, in real time here and in the job log. And you'll see it starts off by um, just 
some basic startup stuff. And then it actually runs the task that was defined in my Travis YAML, that echo hello world. And then you see the output. And because that command exited with an error code of zero, the build is green. It was successful. So that's, that's the basic mechanics of pretty much any CI server is that you give it some sort of task. If that task completes with an exit code of zero, it assumes that the build was good and green. And if it exits with a non-zero error code, it assumes that that bad is bad and broken and it will flag it as, as typically red. Um, and yeah, so there we go. We have our first build on the codependent coder project. Now that's not a very interesting build. It didn't actually really do anything. Um, so why don't we flesh that part out? Which I will do in part two of this series. So we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.